chapter 9. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That has been a scripture that we as a nation have respected and honored for 250 years. And as a result of naming him the Lord of all of us, and the giver of blessings that we enjoy, we have enjoyed as a result a blessing. We have been a blessed people. I think there is a concern wafting across the airways of our country today. How long will those blessings last? How long will we qualify for those blessings? And while none of us know that, I need you to understand some principles. And the principles are based on those scripture verses. Uh, the scripture verse that I read last week, therefore repent and turn away from your sin that the days of blessings will come. And all of us need those moments in time when we recognize the fact that even though we go through difficult moments in time, there is an adjustment moment available. We call it repentance. It's a turning around from a wrong direction to a right direction. It is a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of purpose that allows God to reclaim his position as the Lord of the nation. I want to just touch quickly on three items. A nation blessed of God. A nation that forgets God. And the solution to reclaiming God's choice of blessings. Last, somewhere last week I read an interesting phrase that just kind of penetrated my mind and that was this that the saving of a nation for the glory of God is never done by the unbeliever by the atheist it is always done by God's people God's people save nations God's people save homes God's people save communities. God's people makes a difference everywhere they go because they are light in that place. The penalty for forgetting God is found in Revelation chapter 2 where God said, if you don't remember, repent, and return from whence you once were, I will come and I will take the candlestick out of its place. You know whole movements that once was light and is no longer. I don't want to be a part of an organization like that. I don't want to be a part of a people like that. I don't want to be a part of a community that merely struggles through life trying to figure life out. I, I, I don't want to be there. And, and, and most of you don't either. And so we enjoy this principle that merely says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That's you and that's me. And, and, and yet, I don't know how much you are aware of this, and, and I'm not a rabble rabble. Well, maybe I am. Maybe I need to be. Are you aware how thoroughly historical revisionism is happening? Some of the greatest stories in American history are being rewritten to, to comply with a different narrative that's alive and well in our country today. And it's a narrative where man has elevated himself to be his own God. 
And while few of us will really recognize the fact that, well, I am, I am now God. And yet any time a nation or a people or a person takes all the authority, all the direction, all the divine guidance away from Almighty God and takes it upon himself, he takes God's place and becomes his own God. Are we living in such a day? Can you still remember any of the intent of the Mayflower Compact? People coming to America filled with hope and a future and joy and excitement. But they made an impact and a compact with each other that everything that was going to be in this new land was going to be for the glory of God. How are we doing? Have we forgotten? Do we no longer care? Well, as a country, I'm afraid there is a feeling in our country that that is true. I even believe there are people who have designs to end our country as we know it. And many of you have even said, we've already made that change and will never be the same. If that is true, is there a coming back? Is there a returning? Is there a repenting? And I say, absolutely, yes, there is. What America needs today is a revival of spiritual insight. We don't need better politicians. I listen to politicians. I want you to know that I'm, I'm, I'm politically engaged. I listen to them. And do you know what I conclude? The politicians that are being interviewed, by and large, are some of the brightest people we have. Now, that might be a scary <laughs> statement. But they are bright. They are educated. They, they know what they want to do. But do they seek God for the direction of the country? See, we have a, we have a design. And, and, and I, I, uh, I want to... I want to kind of be a little loosey this morning because I have a design for you this morning. Uh, uh, Rob, I'd like to put that chart up on the wall. A chart that I saw, some of you have seen this before, but it's, it's kind of a basic chart of how nations get lost. And it's really uh, depictive, first of all, of what happened in the Old Testament repeatedly over and over again where a country is blessed of God as the beginning point on the top. They are satisfied. They know what they're, what they're receiving and they're just enjoying their blessings. Then they become proud in heart because they deserve what their blessings are. Then ultimately they forget God and they walk into a judgment. Forsaken of God. At that point, and this is the point that I want to just share with you this morning. At that point, after judgment, if unstopped, they move into destruction. Are we as a country at that point of decision? Not necessarily that point of destruction. We are still the greatest nation in the world. And we all want to remain that. But we can forfeit that and move a different direction right into being destroyed as a nation and suddenly sacrifice all that God has built here for a different way. We can move the other way. We can either go out of the cycle and be no more. Or we can remain in the cycle and start remembering where we came from. Start remembering what we once were. Start remembering what the goals and the visions once was. And, and suddenly, and there's, a, there's the, the remedy on this side of it. Remember, repent, return. Now that's a historic viewpoint. And of course, if you were to try to compare that to a biblical statement, you would see that it's right out of Revelation chapter 2, that unless because the church lost its first love, went its own way, 
God says, you've got to remember when you came, where you came from. You've got to repent. And you've got to return to whence you were. Or I will come and your light will go out. Light and darkness. Think about those for a moment. You are in Jesus, the light of the world. You are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. You are visible. You are light. What happens to darkness when light comes? It always expels darkness. Darkness never expels light. The only path darkness has is for the light to go out. And so here we are as a Christian community worldwide. Here we are as a nation who has enjoyed 200 years of the blessings of God. And we have been a shining light in the world. Will we allow that light to go out? And if we do, what's left? Darkness. So we don't just let the light go out. We invite darkness. We invite all of those elements that we already fight. And yet, remember this. And let me just read a couple of verses to you. And we have a project here for you this morning. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heavens so there is no rain, or if I com uh, command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among the people, which he didn't do, but he said, even if I did, and my people who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then I will hear from heaven, or you will hear from heaven, and will forgive your sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be opened and my ears attentive to the prayer offered in this place. God says, if everything else happens bad, even if I orchestrate it. But if my people pray, their prayers will be answered, and I will not do what I'm capable of doing. I believe in American exceptionalism. We have been exceptionally blessed. Now we need God's people to step up. If my people, which are called by my name, that's you and that's me, will humble themselves. Hum everything else starts with us humbling ourselves. No longer trying to figure this complex life out. No longer trying to figure out what God would do without our help. But just humbling ourselves and saying, oh God, we have not done this well. I've got a whole bunch of other verses I was going to share with you, and I'm not going to. Just for the sake of time, we're going to call you to a different locate, different commitment. Across the country today, there are literally hundreds of thousands of churches praying. Praying for our nation. Praying for our leaders. And the scripture reminds us that the leadership is the God-placed authority in our lives. You all have your political op opinions and positions, and you're entitled to have them just as you do. We lay them all aside, and we say, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat or a whatever. You have a president that's leading the country that needs your prayers. You have a group of senators, 100 of them, who are Republican and Democrat and rebel. 
who need your prayers. Because it doesn't matter what their names are. Do you realize that God is the one power that can penetrate their heart and penetrate their mind and give them thoughts and directions that they didn't even know they needed to hear? And so we're going to pray this morning. Um, where did Jojo go? Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe somebody on the piano. Are you on the piano? Sure. <laughs> Love it. In a public meeting, <laughs> in a public meeting, five minutes is eternal. You ever noticed? Your country is worth five minutes of your time. I, wanna, I want Rob to put up another thing on the uh, overhead. While you were praying, I would like for you to pray that prayer. It's... It's a prayer by our national pastor. This is what I want you to do. I, and I will time you. And then we'll gather you together and then dismiss you. I want you to take five minutes and pray for your country. Pray for your leaders, as, as many names that you can think of. Pray for many office holders as you think you can remember. Local. Pray for the council at Citrus Heights. They affect some things that we do right here. Pray for them. Pray God's intervention into their lives. Pray God's ability to penetrate their heart, penetrate their life, encourage them to turn to God if they haven't already for the guidance and the help to be a nation whose God is the Lord. Now we're opening up all these altars. You can, you can sit right where you are. You can use your seat as, a, as an altar and turn around and kneel at your seat. You can do whatever you're comfortable with doing. But for the next five minutes, I call you Obediently, I call you to pray for your country. Can I call you together again? We're going to sing a chorus and then turn you loose in a moment. As we pray for our leaders, and I'm absolutely sincere in challenging you to pray for them, because we have people in this congregation who came from other countries out of oppression from a country that forgot God. They can tell you about it. But any, any leader, any leader who leads other people, if they refuse to hear God in leadership, and insist on imposing their own way, do you realize that they become God? I think that's a scary thought. But they establish themselves as God because they now have the authority to tell you what to do. I've asked Jolene just to lead us in a chorus. 
we're going to stand together with me, will you? Let's just stand and sing a chorus. You hold my every moment. You calm the rage and see. You walk with me through fire. Heal all my disease, and I trust in you, and I trust. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Pastor Reyes just to pray for us. And I, 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 I kind of like this little guy. <laughs> I always enjoy praying with him, and I always ask him to pray in Spanish uh, because he knows how to pray in Spanish more powerfully than he does in English. <laughs> and, and, and I want the power that God has for us to be expressed through him to us. And then we'll be dismissed together. Would you do that? Amen. Thank you. By the way, he's, he's kind of heading up this project to Guatemala and, and Honduras. And so give him some words of 
encouragement and uh, challenge. He's got a he's got a huge, huge heart for. Um, now I'll give him mine right here, uh, but thank you. Uh, he's got a huge heart for what they're doing. Uh, pray for us. Would you do that? Amen. Padre, en el nombre de Jesús, estamos, Señor, reunidos en esta mañana, agradecidos por tu hermosa palabra, por tu hermosa presencia. Gracias por animar nuestros corazones para llevar tu palabra a las naciones. Bendiga a Guatemala, bendiga a Honduras, bendiga a México, El Salvador, bendiga a esta nación los Estados Unidos de Norteamérica, por los líderes, por cada uno de los gobiernos, Señor, por cada una de las personas que lideran, Padre, en el mundo y también a nuestros pastores, nuestros ancianos, nuestros niños, nuestros jóvenes en esta nación. Gracias, Padre, por el regalo precioso que tú nos has dado de la vida eterna y de predicar tu hermoso evangelio a todas las naciones. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for having been here this morning. Blessings on you as you go. <laughs>